Oh, Ayo Bamilama Dishina, it's good to have you on State Affairs. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Buhari versus Atiku. <laughs> it seems that is what we are going to analyze in the months to come. PDP mm. versus APC. Yes. So what is it going to be like? I think um, from some of my intelligence, which I picked up from the North, it seems to me that um, they've accepted Buhari as their leader. So if I give you the example, I was talking to a friend about Kanu, and there is a bit of, um, there is a tussle between the former governor of Kanu State, Kwan Kwaso, and the present governor of um, Kanu State, Gaduje. And as you know, Gaduje used to be the deputy to Kwan Kwaso. Kwan Kwaso is very, is aligned to Buhari. So I was asking my friend who is from Kano, what's, what's going to happen? He said that the Kano people love Buhari. Mm. That since the days that Buhari has been contesting for the presidency, he has always won Kano and he will always win Kano. I asked the same question about Shokoto. He said the people of Shokoto are very much with Buhari. I asked the same of Bauchi and some other states in the north, and they gave me the same answer, which seems to me that the northerners, in general, I'm not saying everybody's going to vote for mm. um, Buhari, but I think they've accepted Buhari as their leader. So as far as the north is concerned, I think he's going to get the majority of the votes in the north. But that was a Buhari that contested against mostly southerners. Now you have a northerner against another northerner. Mm, it, does, it doesn't matter. The, 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 and you think Atiku will not be able to penetrate Kanu? I don't think he will be able to penetrate Kanu. I don't think so. I but think is it about just APC and PDP? There is a Morgalu, there is a Shore. How come we are not giving them any chance of becoming the next president? I think. Um, like I used to say to my friends, <laughs> one, you have to know Nigeria to understand Nigeria. I think when you look at people like Mongalu, you think, look at people like Shori. Of course, they are talking some of the things that are the ills of our society. They are a young blood who have got the idea of where they think this country should move to. Mm. You know, the next, the next steps that we need to take for us to start to develop faster than we are developing now. Well, at the end of the day, the question is, it's about the network. It's about the language. What do I mean about the network? It's not, yes, and I, I like Shori, I like Mbori, young blood, with, with, with fresh ideas. But the question is, can they actually communicate with the people who are going to vote on the day? Who are these people that they need to communicate with? Well. You know, you and I can understand that language, English language. Mm. Are they able to communicate with our people who are mostly uneducated all over the country, who don't actually understand their language? And that's the key. The key is the PDP, the APC, have got that network. They understand how to communicate with our people. And, as, and as, so in my view, Mogalu and Shori will have to learn the treat. How do you communicate those good ideas and the language that our people mostly on educator will understand? Is it just about language as a tool of communication? Or are you also looking at the effect of money? There, there, is, there is the effect of money. Only three years ago, or three and um, a bit years ago, there was the Buhari movement. Don't forget. The sitting president at that time, Jonathan Goodluck, spent a lorry load of money. Why didn't have much to spend? I didn't say APC didn't spend money, but they didn't spend one tenth of what Jonathan spent. So in my view, the people that I am talking about who will stand in the queue to vote for the candidate of their choice. Yes, there is the issue of money, but then at the same time, there is the issue of are we speaking the language they understand? 
And at that particular point in time, the, the language that they understood was change. And that is change, Jonathan, because there is a widespread belief that the, the country was, was going under. Is the country faring better under Buhari? It depends on the way you look at it. There are some fundamental things, in my view, which has improved over the last couple of, of years, the last three and a half years. A booking country, like I've, all, I've always said to people, cannot be mended within three and a half years, irrespective of what pe people may say. I'm not saying that Buhari is running a perfect government. I am only saying that this country is broken. So when we look at the issue of Boko Haram, we don't have the kind of mayhem that we used to have on the general time. If you have an economy which has been dilapidated, it takes a while for it to start to get made. So if I give you an example, Bauchi State is growing rice and Lagos State is actually importing rice from Bauchi. And so agricultural, the agricultural sector has improved under Buhari. It will take a little bit of time for it to, to start to have serious effect on the people. And at a particular point in time, when you look at the exchange rates of the country, it was around about 500 plus to one. Under Buhari? Under Buhari. And um, it's, it's going down now. The, the people are getting hungrier. Nigeria has become the capital of poverty. <laughs> Nigeria is not so only the capital of poverty. When you look at quite a number of other countries in the world, Sri Lanka, even the fast growing in India, there is a high level of, of poverty there. But not compared to Nigeria from recent statistics. Well, even if you, don't, if, you, if you can't compare it to Nigeria, but I think there is something about reflection. We Nigerians will need to continue to stop to think. Did Buhari actually started the abject poverty that you're talking about? We have had successful go successive governments in this country that haven't actually addressed those key levers which could actually aid development. So in my view, in my view, Buhari, as at this particular point in time, is made a couple of strides. I'll continue to say it. I am not saying the Buhari's government is perfect. What I am saying is, as of 2014-15, when Buhari took power, this country was going towards running bankrupt. So if we compare what we mean by going bankrupt to what we have today, you will know that there has been substantial changes. In this Some country. would say Buhari added insults to injury. By doing what? That's, 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 that, that will be the question. By doing what? So if I give you another example, something that I tend to reflect on all the time. Someone said to me the other day, he said, if you put 10 Nigerians down and you want to actually assign them to position of responsibility, you will hardly find two that are not corrupt. While people talk a lot about restructure, I can understand why, why people are talking about restructure. Corruption is the bane of our society. It won't go away. It's, just not, it's, just, it's not just applicable to the ruling class. Even the masses, corruption has eaten deep into our society. Anybody, irrespective of how much imperfect any government that it's trying to address the issue of corruption, the, that government is helping this country. It may take a while for us to start to see the effect. From the calculations, it seems everyone is talking about Khan uh, being uh, a state that will determine who really wins the 2019 presidential election. <laughs> but who is, not, who is not talking about the South? Is it just about the North? It's not just about the North. We have uh, Moyo State. We are we both reside right now. We will have our votes and, and, and Ogun State and Lagos State and other, other states in the, in the southeast and the south, 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 not just in the southwest. And we also have, when we talk about the north, we, we talk about, the, there is also the middle belt there, which some, some people will refer to as the north. A combination of all, all these states will contribute to who, who ever out of the candidates that we, we've got. And you see Buhari the, winning the election come 2019? I think so. I think so. Where do you stand? Well, um, <laughs> as you know, 
I'm alarmist. <laughs> um, I, I think I've only got one vote, Edmund. And I haven't actually, I think I'm going to use that vote for my party. I've always said one of the things that glue all, all our leaders together is most especially those people who have passed through LAM is that progressive philosophy. And what's that progressive philosophy? We we'll want to have someone who will be more focused on providing good education for our people. We want to see someone who will be more focused on providing good medical services for our people. We want to see someone who is going to industrialize the state. We want to see someone who is going to develop the rural areas. And most especially, we want to see someone who is going to embark on actions which will create job for the youths in this state. That's, that's the thing, that, that's, that's the stuff, Lamist philosophy, I will always philosophy, but I against philosophy that we all embrace. Uh, Dr. Ayobami, does this word progressive make any meaning anymore? It does to me. To you? Yes. But to the people, it doesn't make any meaning anymore. I think it does. People just come bandit the name, I'm a progressive, and then yes. you don't see any difference. Well, you know, <laughs> you, still, you still see, you see, you see a, lot of, um, a lot of differences. I am a progressive. Um, Elijah Lama, when he was alive, uh, was a progressive. Shibolaige was a progressive. Shibawelo was a progressive. And you have quite a number of people within the political circle right now who um, were, got the, their political education from these th three great men. The question is for our people to provide these people who, have, who got their good education, political education from these great men, give them the opportunity to serve. Before we round off this discussion, let's look at Tinubu. Hmm. Has it become a burden on the APC? Why? Especially the APC in Lagos. I mean, I, I don't... I don't uh, play politics in Lagos State. So I wouldn't say that um, His Excellency Senator Ahmed Balaj Tinubu has become a burden on, on, on the people uh, in Lagos. Uh, because as far as I am concerned, he went through the progressive education as well. You have got to note, his late mother was an Aoist. Everybody seemed to be an Aoist. Not everybody. Yes, everybody claims to be an Aoist. No, I don't think... And when they win election, you don't see the Aoism <laughs> in the actions. <laughs> well, we have to give examples. We have to give examples. Is there a reason in Lagos State? Do you see it? Lagos is dirty? I think... You have I'm, poor people everywhere in Lagos. The roads are bad. So where is their worst tendency? I think, I think if, if, if you... Um, when I come back from, from the UK where I work, I pass through Lagos. I could see development in Lagos. State. You see development? Yes, I the do. Bad roads in Ocean. Well, well... Mm, the dirty environment? Well, the potholes in Lekki, I think, I think, I, I think, I think um, there, there is no way. There are, like I've always said to people, there are, there are three tiers of government in this country. Mm. You have the, um, the executive arm of government, you have the legislative arm of government, you have the judiciary. So if we take, if we put the judiciary on one side and we concentrate on the executive, and the legislator. Mm. These, and you also have not just the, um, the state legislator, you have the federal legislators mm. there. All of them have got their own responsibilities to the people. So it's not just about Tinubu when it comes to Lagos. Exactly. So that's, that's what I'm trying. But he controls the legislature, the executive. He chooses who become governor. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so sure. I think um, the people who are elected as governors or members of the federal house or as senators or even as members of the House of Assembly. If we say control, we're trying to say that they are not adults who have got 
their own Are minds. Are you not trying to be political here? Uh, no, no, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not being... And when we say control, <laughs> you understand what I mean. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, I'm not so sure I understand what you mean. But I, I think what I am trying to say is, Edmund, if the people of a state uh, have decided to continue to vote for a particular political party in Lagos, there must be some good in it. Do, do the people even understand themselves? Well, that's a separate issue. So is, is it, that's exactly what, when I was. Have talking, the people not boxed themselves to a corner? Again, that's a. And they are paying the price. I, I think that's a separate issue because you and I, we've got a PVC card with the responsibility to go out there and vote for a candidate of our choice. Mm. Now, whatever choice they make, they have got to, to you know, <laughs> stick, stick with it for four years. Yes, and they pay for it, right? Well, you, you know, you, you can't force anybody to go and vote for your own preference. You, you, you can pay them to vote, right? I, I, I don't, I mean, as, as far as I am concerned, Everybody who knows the family that I come from, we don't do it in dues. We don't pay people to, to vote. We tell people, as a progressive, we tell people, these are the things that we are going to do if we get elected. The history of the progressive camp to which I belong, including my father, Alajila Madishina, speak for itself. However, however, Edmund, what I am saying is, our people, yes, some of them, may not have Western education, but they are quite intelligent enough to understand by now the difference between a politician and a politician. Dr. Ayobami Lama Dishino, thank you for featuring on State Affairs. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.